2009 Dodge Ram 1500 deal today. He's got a really bad rear end noise. I just took the four 15 millimeter bolts off the drive shaft and bungee corded it up just so I could turn it by hand. And you can feel it and hear it. It just feels wrong, this pinion. You can. It, it's got really, really Brennell bearings and races on the pinion gear. And, um, yeah, this tire doesn't want to turn either. So he's, he's got some caliper issue there. Probably a caliper slide I'll have to free up. But um, I'm going to rebuild this whole differential. I got all new bearings for it and all new seals. It's all going to be new bearings and seals. A lot of times the best deal is to just go to a driveline shop. They just give you all the stuff. Um, that's usually the best deal. I got the side bearings and everything. Oh, you're going to watch me do this. I let this thing drip overnight. I just loosened up all the bolts and separated the pumpkin, the differential cover. I'm just going to take this off and get a visual real quick before I get all carried away with it. Yeah, I got lots of metal shavings in here. All kinds that didn't stick on this magnet. Looks okay, it's just got a lot of metal shavings in it. A lot, a lot. That's a lot of, a lot of metal. Holy crap. Yep, there's some good sizable chunks in there. That's a big reason why you get all new bearings, because you don't know where all this went. And you get the bearings out of the out of the out of the sides and you can get in there and clean out these axle tubes. I'm gonna take this side off first just because this caliper's hanging up. I pulled it in, the piston feels fine. I think one of the brakes pads are just sticking on the caliper support bracket really bad. First thing I want to do is get this clip off of here. I just break these off with the side cutters. I don't mess around. I don't put them back on. 10 millimeters on here. Yeah, these these brake pads are stuck. These are 21 millimeters. I'm just going to take the abutment clips off. There's probably rust behind them. I'll clean it all up and these pads should move. I'm going to I'm going to try to use a dead blow on this so I don't damage the rotor. And it don't want to come off. Nice. Emergency brakes hanging up on this thing. Finally! I'm surprised. Usually these brake shoes bust right off. And of course, you just do the same to the other side. Usually in the rust belt, they come off real nice. The rotors just fall right off because these pads come apart and you have no emergency brake. That's the sound of special right there. I got a 6.8 millimeter wrench I use for this. I use this on battery terminal ends too. Once in a while they strip out, so if you use a 12 point. This is Loctited in too, so they come out kind of fun. Now when you take these out, you want to get a good look at them. Because, um, like if people really like to be destructive with their rear end and do neutral drops and crazy stuff, this pin will shear right off and then you won't be able to get it off. I don't know, that's kind of questionable. I don't think somebody was being entirely nice to this differential in his life. I just might get one of these. I'm going to turn this up just enough so I don't have to pull this pin out. And then you want to slide these axles in one at a time because there's a clip in here that falls right out. That one and that one. And after I do that I put this pin back in because I'm not going to be taking any of these spider gears or anything apart. There, that way you don't have to take deal with them spider gears. They'll just stay in there. These four gears in here. 
you do that and you can slide these axles right out. I like to put a rag on here. You put a rag around this and just wipe this off while I'm pulling it out. And throw that stinky rag away and do the same to the other side. I'm going to get these seals and bearings out of here next. Ooh, there went my brake pad. Nice. Here, let's see if the other one wants to come off. Oh, some of it. Nice junk. Gee, why didn't that come off before? Would have made my life a lot easier getting that damn rotor off. There, I like that. That's nice. Rather unorthodox way of getting it out, but it's out. You can get a set of these through Harbor Freight or something. I've had these for a billion years. I think these are OTCs. They're rather expensive. The ones from Harbor Freight, though, I think you can get a set for under $30. You just find the right one and stuff it in here. Screw this down. And you got to have a slide hammer for this. Just like that. And do the same to the other side. You get When you get these axles out, you're going to want to make sure that this bearing surface is in good condition. If it's all brennel and all chewed up, you're going to want to replace the axle. These look good. Next I'm going to take off these bolts. These are little clips for the adjuster. A lot of your older axles and different axles, they don't even have these. They just got shims. Yeah, that's 11 millimeter or 7 16 This is actually standard stuff, but metric works. These are 3 quarter inch um, or 19 millimeter. You want to loosen these up. Now way down in there, that's a hex adjuster. And it's 36 millimeters. Um, a lot of people just make a tool. I just used um, an old axle nut I had laying around and I, I took a socket and pressed it in there really hard on, on my press. Um, you could probably weld something. There's tools you can buy for this too um, that you can put on an extension or there's one that's just attached to a big bar and I just use a really long extension. So when you stick this thing in here, um, I'm going to want to adjust my lash. I'm going to I'm going to want to make sure I get I I I get everything right when I put this back together. But to save yourself a headache, and if you don't have a dial indicator or whatever to set everything up, if you're just guessing, which a lot of redneck backyard tree jackers do. Um, you're going to want to remember what side you loosen up first and you want to tighten it this side up last because you're going to get it real close. Now I'm, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to turn it exactly two turns counterclockwise to loosen up that carrier. I'm going to do the same to the other side. Now when I do two on each side I want to do this one last because this is the one that I loosened up first. And they say you want to you want to tighten these up to 75 foot pounds. It seems like every time I take one of these apart, it's looser than 75 foot pounds. But whatever, whatever, whatever. Now you can take these caps off. I forgot to mark these just to make sure you get them, put them back in the right spot. You can use a chisel or whatever you want to mark these. I don't know. I got some punches I'm going to use. And take this thing out of here. And it's not exactly light, so you're forewarned. Ooh, crunchy. I'm going to start a couple of these uh, drive shaft bolts. Get that there pinion nut off of there. And you can just take a hammer and knock this out of here. You want to make sure this surface is nice. It usually always is. And you're going to want to put your nut back on here just so you don't wreck the threads on your pinion. You just tap this thing through. 
Okay, I'm going to get a bigger hammer. And there's your pinion right here. Your crush lead. Now I can go ahead and get this pinion seal out of here. Get this bearing out of here. See how brennel that bearing is? Absolutely no good. Now on these races, there's always a groove in the axle on the top and the bottom. And that's so you can you can get in here with a chisel like this. And you can you can hit on that race on the top and the bottom. You just do a little at a time, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, until I, until you pop these things out. There, everything's out of this thing. Now I just got to clean it all up. Okay, I got a cheap little bearing separator to try to get this off. Um, there's a crush sleeve on here. You're always going to want to replace this with a new one. Um, there's a shim down in between this bearing. The shim is put in there so you get the right distance for the pinion so it meshes, it meshes with the ring gear properly on the carrier. So you don't want to damage that shim. If you do, you got to put another one on it that's the same thickness. And it, 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 it should be right. So I'm going to try to take this off. A lot of times this bearing will just blow apart and then I'll have an inner race that's stuck on there that I got to deal with. So. I'm not too confident that this is going to work, but I'm going to try to get it off this way anyways. Um, if, if, if you don't have a press and you don't know how to get all this stuff off and you can't cut the thing off and push it, press it back on, you're probably going to have to pay a shop or somebody, machine shop or somebody to do it for you. This is all just a little bit dangerous. You got to watch your eyes and your feet and watch your everything. You got to keep your hand on this pinion because you don't want this thing falling on the ground because you could chip this gear and then you'll be screwed. I'm just going to go real easy and hope this thing wants to press out without blowing this bearing apart. Yeah, it's coming out. <laughs> Fun. Here's that shim I was mentioning. I got a little different setup for this. I got a puller kit, one of these OTC. This way I don't have to put this carrier in the press and try to figure out a way to deal with that. Nope. I'm just going to cut this one apart. Now I got to get some brake cleaner and I got to clean these out really, really well. Really well.